there, it's Dusty Thunder, and I have an update for you, too. The Am I the Astronaut for leaving a dinner party after a girl sat on my husband's lap story. That's right. It's time. Let's dive into the update here. For people who are still asking me about the update in private messages, so my mother-in-law came with my husband, and well, the talk happened. There were a lot of things, but I will try to summarize. Basically, Jake apologized to me first and tried to explain his point of view. He said that he was angry because, A, I left without saying anything for the whole night when he was literally trying to just defuse the situation and tried to laugh it off because it was so awkward he didn't know what else to do. But instead of communicating, I just left him in that weird situation. That's totally your fault, OP. He was meeting his friends after such a long time and just wanted the dinner to be peaceful. And Cindy was going back anyways. And we would most likely never meet her again. I call bullshit on that as well. B, he acknowledged Cindy was indeed overstepping boundaries, but he didn't know how to bring it up since he has literally seen her growing up and she is like a little sister to him. Also, she acts like that with everyone. Call bullshit on that too, bro. He thought that it was just for a few days and he wanted no drama during their stay so he would just brush it off. That does not lead to no drama, bro. He did acknowledge he was wrong about not saying anything. C, he was already really worried and sad because how I just left with no explanations. Even after I came home, not once did I ask how he felt. He was also very overwhelmed with everything and felt I was accusing him for not doing anything when he literally pushed her off as politely as possible when she tried to sit. He felt I was attacking his character and even gave an ultimatum, which made him so sad he felt as if I thought that less of him. It wasn't about Cindy, but how easy it was for me to question his sincerity. He said after that dinner, he was going to go extremely low contact with her anyways. And D, he apologized for not speaking up about the disrespect Cindy was showing towards me and for also leaving like that. Then after Jake said everything, mother-in-law explained to Jake about the situation from her perspective. She scolded him a lot as well. In short, she told him that as a husband, it was his responsibility to make me feel like I am his priority and that he disappointed me the moment I had to come to him to ask for establishing boundaries. As a husband, it was his duty that I never would have to come to him about this in the first place. She also asked him about how he would have felt had it been a guy on my lap and he had no answer for it. She told him what I did was an eruption of suppressed feelings and as a husband, it was his duty to go after me and never let me leave in the first place. There were a lot of things said by her and Jake seemed to realize and sincerely apologized for his actions. She told him if he ever pulled such a stunt ever again, then not to expect her to take him in. Later, she took me for a walk. It was just the two of us, and there were, and there she explained some things to me as well. She said that she's sorry for everything, but told me that even at her house, Jake was distraught. He didn't tell her because he most likely knew he was wrong too, but was overwhelmed about everything as well. She said in no way is she excusing her son's behavior, but she would hope that I would forgive him. She also said that in no circumstances do I need to leave my house as it was my house and my family's. She said I shouldn't be afraid in speaking my mind if anything else makes me uncomfortable and to talk to her if Jake does something stupid again and she will set him straight. She hoped we would work it out since she has seen our love for each other and it would be sad to see us split up due to some disrespectful brat, her words. She said she cannot have a say in our issues, but suggested that we should get counseling to understand each other better. She even bought ice cream for me. I know it's a bit childish, but she said sweet things work as a charm when people are upset. And well, she was right. Well, it was awkward at night. Jake came into our room and we didn't know what to say. After a while, we talked and we both apologized to each other. However, I did tell him that I was angry at him to tell everything to Sean and was deeply hurt by the text he sent me. He said he didn't know what I was talking about and I showed him the text. He said he didn't tell Sean about our fight and only told him that he was at his mom's place. He called Sean and well, it turns out Sean told Cindy and told her how she went too far at the party. Then Cindy made a huge sob story about how I was passive aggressive with her the whole time, how I would always try to question her character and act insecure and jealous. She even went on to say that I was always like that with her, even when she was a kid, that I never liked her and always tried to manipulate people into thinking I was an angel while she was a little shit. Well, that made him angry to think about how I have been treating Cindy, and he sent those texts. Jake and I were baffled by such accusations, and he tried to explain to Sean how it wasn't true, but then Jake just let it be and decided to go no contact with Cindy and extremely low contact with Sean. Jake apologized again, but we just cuddled and slept. Well, Cindy is out of our lives for good now, and we have decided to go to counseling for better communication in the future. Let's see how everything goes in the future, but yeah, we are not getting divorced. I know a lot of you people wanted me to show Jake this post, but he was so sad and got scolded a lot already, so I decided not to show him the post for now. Maybe in the future. Sorry for all this rambling. Have a good day. 
Edit, I read people saying that we should be no contact with Sean too, and I felt that it would be best to let that friendship go as well. So I talked to my husband about it, and he agreed. So he sent a text to Sean stating that we could not be friends with him and then blocked him as well. To clarify, I have somewhat forgiven Jake for his actions, but I told him he needs to rebuild the trust that I had. So I know I can rely on him in situations like that. He agreed, and we will get couples counseling as well. Thank you all for your advice. You all made me feel less lonely in all of this. Well, that's good. Um, first, first spotlight on an extremely helpful mother-in-law, huh? How about that? How about a round of applause for mother-in-law here? Because how rare is it that we see one show up and fix a problem? Everything that was set up front in the very beginning of this post, I called bullshit on with uh, with Brozo Hubby, and I'm still giving him the Brozo Award now because him trying to make her feel bad for leaving and not not uh, thinking about how he feels. Well, dude, come on. It, it, this was obvious to the entire world what was going on here. And just because you didn't want drama, it does not mean that inaction is the answer. Inaction did not create less drama, did it? Inaction in this case actually made more drama than there would have been if you were like, hey, what are you doing? Don't do that. Don't, don't act like that with me. That is not okay. You're like a little sister to me. You're being disrespectful to my wife. Stop. That would have created a little burst of drama and then it would have been over. What you did, let it snowball here and get to this point. I'm so glad mother-in-law came in here and, and was like, that was stupid. Don't do that shit ever again. So she said him right. That's amazing. I'm glad that they're looking at counseling. This is going to be a long road here, but I think they're taking the right steps. So Good. It's it's rare that we see, you know, some kind of positive resolution like this and a path to a solution being facilitated by a mother-in-law. Again, I'm just amazing. Amazing. I still think hubby is 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 at least he knows he's in the wrong, but his explanations here are not helping him. My advice to you at this point, hubby, is to keep your mouth shut. You're just getting yourself in more trouble and do the work to rebuild trust. That's the only mission you have right now. Keep your mouth shut. Don't try to explain anything away because it's only making it worse. Do the work. That's it. Hopefully we don't see another update on this one. Will I be the astronaut if I don't go to my college graduation? I, 31 male, recently finished my master's degree and I never planned on attending the graduation ceremony. For context, I have two associates and a bachelor's and I've never gone to any of my graduations because it's not my thing. The only graduation of mine that I've ever attended was my high school graduation. Anyway, I was on FaceTime with my dad a few weeks ago when he saw the certificate on my fireplace mantle. When I told him what it was, he said, why didn't you invite me to the graduation? Without thinking about it, I told him the graduation isn't until May, so he could still come if he wanted. Then I immediately backtracked and told him all the reasons why I really just don't care to go. He started begging me to go because this would be his only chance to see one of his kids walk the stage to get their masters. To be fair, he's not wrong. I'm number three of five kids, and to this point, none of my siblings even have an associate, so I fully understand what he's saying. I would probably be devastated if either of my kids didn't want to attend their graduation, too. My dad and I have a great relationship, and I don't think not going to my graduation would ruin that, but I also don't want him to have to keep flying out here for every milestone we have. We live on opposite sides of the country, and he's already flying out here this week for my younger daughter's first birthday. And again, if I get promoted this year, it will be announced in May. And again, for my graduation in May. I know money wouldn't be much of an issue, but I genuinely don't want him to visit for a day or two just so we can drive almost two hours away and back for my graduation. Also, I completely forgot to mention this to my dad, but the graduation is two days after my 11th anniversary and my wife and I are trying to plan a week long trip to celebrate. We haven't confirmed anything, so maybe that's why I forgot to mention it. I asked my wife what to do since I really don't want to go, but also don't want to let my dad down. But she's just as lost as I am. And so no one asks how my mom feels about it. She died when I was seven. Got it. Edited to add. Okay, this post is only a few hours old, but everyone here says NTA, but your comments kind of make me feel like the Askinaut. I guess I kind of came here for a bit of understanding and getting other people's stories and perspectives, which is what I got. I appreciate you all for that. So I made my decision. I will be attending my graduation. I might hate it. The whole time I might be saying, I can't wait till this is over so I can go change clothes, but I'm going for one reason and one reason only for my pops. 
Thank you for all the insight, and I hope you all have a wonderful Sunday. Okay. Um, Until the very end, whatever OP just went ahead and made his decision. My thought here was it, it, I understand not wanting, not caring about going because, because the, the ceremony is not the accomplishment, right? It is completing the journey. That is the accomplishment. Now, now the ceremony is like the ceremony is celebration of completing that accomplishment. I understand how OP feels about it. Um, it, It's nice to see that he's, he's doing something that he, that he doesn't want to do just for his father. That's great. If he chose not to do it, I would hope that his father would be understanding and be like, I'm proud of you for for the achievement. Walking the stage is not the achievement. It is completing the journey. So I, I as a dad, feel like I would be equally proud whether they walked the stage or not. It'd be great to have some pictures or something to be able to share. But you're also talking about putting OP through some pain with them doing something they feel uncomfortable doing and also having a lot of pain involved with making that flight and doing the travel. So is it worth the pain to be able to have a couple of pictures when the ceremony is just a ceremony? It's not the achievement. Uh, Candy CLKB says for someone whose dad passed away, I would do it for my dad in a, in a heartbeat. I get it. And, and that's ultimately why OP ended up doing it. If OP had chosen not to go, I would still say NTA. And I feel like as a dad, I would be just as proud if they went or didn't go. So, so there's that. Um, but, but, chose to go so dad scored one here uh and and i hope dad understands how much effort op is going through here just for him i hope he understands that let's hope Title of this one is, Am I the Astronaut for Being Upset by My Wife's Books? Okay. So before we get into that, Am I the Astronaut for Being Upset is a feeling, right? You can't be an asshole for feeling something. It's what you do with that that can make you an astronaut or not one. So let's see where it goes. Me and my wife have been together for quite some time. Recently, she has dove deep into reading romance books, which I never really knew much about. That is until one of her books went viral on TikTok, and I was genuinely shocked at how vulgar and not safe for work those books can be. So I asked her about them, and almost everyone is the same or worse. I hid my displeasure because it's not my place to tell her what she can or can't read, but I did try to read some of her books in order to understand, and my lord. Not all of them are so hardcore, but it shook me to my core. I realize they are just books and I'm not looking to control her, and for that reason I have not said a word, but deep down I do want her to stop. It has nothing to do with romance, it is just the spicy scenes are so graphic it makes me uncomfortable. I do not want to ask her to stop reading them, but I don't know what to do. It's been weeks and I have been hurting because I can't just wrap my head around it. Small disclaimer, I am neurodivergent, more specifically ADHD, OCD, and anxiety. I don't know if some of those things make me react differently to the content specifically, but it does cause me to obsess over things. I do not want to ask her because I know she would stop for me without a doubt, but I want her to be happy and have a good time. Any advice on how to proceed without being an astronaut would be appreciated. Okay, um, let's talk about this for a minute. So the, the question is, am I the astronaut for being upset by my wife's books? Again, you, you can't be an asshole for feeling something, but you definitely could be for for allowing that to drive you into the wrong kind of actions here, right? Um, you're not the asshole for for being bothered by that, right? I don't think you can control what you do or do not feel. Um, processing that and figuring out what to do with it is is a completely different deal, though. But yeah, yeah, Lady Van Landingham for sure. The 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 fixation is what is definitely making it worse here, and I think understanding that you have something that is causing you to fixate that is really where where the focus should be now okay i know i'm fixated on this thing i know i easily fixate on things how do i stop fixating on this thing find something else to fixate on okay it is you don't have an issue with her reading this but reading it makes you uncomfortable so don't read it uh but just the fact that she's read it makes you uncomfortable I don't know. I feel like Candy Thunder, if you were reading spicy romance novels, I would have no problem with it at all. So uh, I'm just interested in getting your take on this because, okay, 
Uh, yeah, if it bugs you, don't read it. But but he said it doesn't doesn't make her make him think that she's less of a person. It just bothers him that she that she reads it. So, what are your thoughts here? I think that this is a him problem. And I was thinking the same thing. I, but I feel like I can't say that out loud. No, I was wondering if this if reading stuff in the books is something that they you know their husband and wife they're having sex. That's totally normal. Fine. I know, right? Oh my gosh, shock. Um. So I think maybe he's feeling like he can't live up to the romance novels. And so maybe it makes him feel a little bit inadequate, which it's a book. It gets fiction like these. This is not real life. And if she's not putting like that pressure on you to, you know, because sometimes people can read a book and think that that's real life um, and and expect that to happen, like expect your life to unfold like a romance novel. Um, and that's not real life. But if she's not putting that pressure on him to to achieve these unachievable goals, then let your wife read her smut and who cares? Uh, to, to Anne's point, like imagine how how he could benefit from this. I'm thinking the same thing. But then also my man says up here, that's the username, not me saying <laughs> um, says this gives me the whole if you have a dream about somebody else, that's still cheating kind of vibe. Maybe, maybe, but I, I, I think I think OP has acknowledged here that it doesn't it doesn't doesn't make them uncomfortable or make them think any less of their partner. It just right. reading that kind of stuff makes them personally uncomfortable, which is an easy fix. Don't read it right, but but it's the fixation. The fixation is yeah. is where this is a problem in here. And to your point, Candy Thunder, there are I, I've heard of a lot of people, even even people that that have been you know connected to my personal life in the past who who got lost in books to the point where they couldn't like their spouses got lost in books and and yes. kind of absorbed that they should be real life and that completely I, gave them an unachievable benchmark for real life and, yeah. and it destroyed their relationship so I, uh, to your point that is a real possibility if that doesn't yeah. happen though like what is the harm going on here i mean if if your wife isn't like i said isn't giving you that those expectations that you're supposed to live up to this, whatever's happening in her book, then I think, I think you might be, it, it's definitely a you problem. You're reading too much into it. It's probably just something that, that she likes reading or being <clears throat> say, stimulated in that way. And I mean, stimulated, like reading it, not, not in a, that kind of way. <laughs> Maybe she does. I don't know. And it doesn't matter the, it, that, that part of it like doesn't, I don't think that matters. Maybe ask your wife why she reads them, what she gets out of it. Um, and maybe then you can understand I, it better. I, 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 I mean, he has to know or he's not like he said, he's OCD. He's neurodivergent, neurodivergent. He's going to he's going to fixate on this. He's going to want to know the whys. And if she unless he finds something to swap for that fixation. But I think if, if yeah. they dive deeper into the conversation at this point, I, I think the service level understanding that he has right now is that he doesn't have a problem with it. He's just fixated on it. So right. swap it and fixate on something else so that you can move on. If, if they stick with this and continue in the conversation and he asks why I feel like he's going to start fixating yeah. on that now instead. And that's just going to, it's going to be a rabbit hole that he can't escape and it's going to end up causing them actual problems. I think whenever I was younger, the Twilight series was something that captivated me in that love story. And my life wasn't like that. Like it was real life. And so it made me feel. Is that why you keep putting glitter on my face? <laughs> yeah. But that's why like, I wanted that love. Really like I wanted to feel that. And I didn't feel that. And so I thought that something was wrong. And I think that goes hand in hand with um, like living in your own reality and not. But it, it doesn't seem like his wife has that issue. Like where she no. is projecting this onto her real life. I think she just reads them because she enjoys reading them. It is interesting that OP says that he has no doubt. Vampires she, don't sparkle. They OP has no doubt that, that their partner would stop reading them for OP. Which, right. I mean, so it sounds like they have a healthy relationship and this is just something that he didn't know she was doing. And so it's a shock to him, right. but I don't, I don't think that he's wrong in feeling the way that he does about it. I just, I, it's a him problem, and I would not project that onto your wife. Yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't make your problem your wife's problem because she doesn't have a problem up to this point. Yeah. Well, and in, in dissecting the title even differently here, am I the ask not for being upset by my wife's, my wife's books? Him reading those books made him upset. I don't, I, I don't know. I, I would think that there has to be a way to swap, like to, to intentionally fixate on something new, um, if for no other reason than to 
keep him busy and give give the back of his mind time to, <laughs> See, and to process and accept. Dustin and I, even last night, like we bickered because we differ on that. I like to talk things through till I have no breath left, which, as you know, doesn't take very long. But um, I have to talk, 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 and he does not want to talk. He wants to internalize and focus on solutions and not talk until I need time he's comfortable to process. So it's it's funny that that was brought up. Yeah, I need time to process, and if I don't have time to process, the communication is very messy, and we just we will end up in an argument. Um, and she needs to talk, so finding some kind of balance there <laughs> is difficult. Like it's that's a difference, but I don't think I don't think differences are incompatibilities. It is just there's a way there's just there's a compromise in there somewhere in this case nah. it is <laughs> in this case it is something that op understands is a them problem they just mm -hmm. have to figure out how to process that and how to accept that and okay. not force their their issues with this literature onto someone else as solid as i feel like we are you know those communication st styles can still be a complication like in last night it was it was you know if i don't have time to think and to process and i and whenever i take in something stressful i need to get away and let my mind fixate on something else so in the back of my mind i can be working that problem i'm not going to find a solution by sitting there talking it through right then uh and that's just one of the areas where we vary but i think it's you you find a way to work through it somehow somehow <laughs> Am I the astronaut for telling off my best friends after they skipped my graduation party? This happened almost 10 years ago, but I still think about it from time to time. I, 23 at the time, female, had been friends with M, 24 at the time, female, since sixth grade, and N, 25 at the time, female, all through high school. There's lots of letters there that were making that a little confusing for me. I got it now. I got it. I got it. We have, we have OP, we have M, and we have N. Two female friends. I finally managed to squeeze four years of college into six and wanted to celebrate with a big graduation blowout. My parents volunteered to host since it was summer in Texas and they have a pool. I bought the booze, made the food and decorated my parents' house and patio in anticipation of good times. The party was revolving door style, people coming and going as they needed to, since the party started at 5 p.m. and wouldn't wind down until I was tired, probably around midnight. M and N told me they were at a supernatural convention for the day, but they'd be at the party later that night. Side note, I wasn't invited to go with them, even though we all watched the show because I had already sent out invites to my party when they bought their tickets. They texted me pictures from the convention throughout the day, and I was feeling more and more upset that I wasn't included in those plans. Around 9 p.m., they still hadn't shown up. I texted our group chat asking what time they'd be over. I didn't receive a text back until almost 10 p.m. M texted that they were super wiped from the convention, but they were still planning on coming by. My coworkers, really more friends than coworkers, had been there since 8 p.m. and we'd been doing celebration shots together. So I was more than a little tipsy. By 11 p.m., M and N still hadn't shown up and I was pissed and a bit drunk. I sent a text in the group chat telling them that they were total bitches for bailing on me for a freaking convention that they didn't even invite me to and that what they did was super shitty. Supernaturally shitty. They cut all contact with me that night and I spent the next three years feeling uber guilty about it. After finally talking to a therapist, I tried to reconnect with M and N to apologize for the text. Needless to say, it did not go well. Long story short, N essentially told me to F off and leave her alone and M and I had a meetup that ended in disaster. I didn't think I was totally justified in sending that, that text to the group chat that night, but I still have had needling doubt telling me I shouldn't have said it. So was I the astronaut? Edit, I'm not looking to salvage the friendship. I made my peace with the loss about five years ago. It's just something that pops into my brain from time to time, and I'm genuinely curious. Update, this will probably be my one update to my post, so I'll try to address everything. I'm not looking to salvage these friendships. This happened years ago, and I've made my peace with it. I was just genuinely curious because it's one of those things that pops into my head from time to time. We had talked about going to the convention together when the dates and cities were announced. Our city was less than an hour from where we all lived, and we were excited. However, the tickets were too expensive. In originally had to work that day, and we decided as a group not to go. They bought their tickets about two weeks before the convention because Inn managed to get the day off. I was not included in that discussion. They told me after the fact. 
I didn't have the money to go because I had been getting stuff from my graduation party, but them sending pictures throughout the day felt like a slap in the face to me. And I'll admit, I was more than a little bit jealous. My therapist at the time had told me it couldn't hurt to reach out to them for the sake of closure. When I reached out to N and M, I apologized for the things I said and explained why I felt the way that I did. No, it didn't excuse the angry text, and I said that. N told me to F off. M and I decided to meet up. It was awkward. We were both uncomfortable, and we now lived three hours away from each other. I didn't go into details because it was a separate thing. Generally speaking, our parties ended at midnight or so. Yes, it's early for a lot of college kids, but we also had retail jobs that had us clocking in at 9 a.m., even on weekends. The convention was a day-long thing. I think it was at 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. or something like that. M and N said they would come by after the convention. Again, the city was less than an hour away, even in rush hour traffic. I have a full-time job, and I posted this right before my day started. I just didn't have the opportunity to be on Reddit while I'm on the clock, even during my lunch hour. This is the first opportunity I've had to read through everybody's comments. Okay, so uh, we did learn some new information in that. Callie says it's a, it's an ESH, which may be... Which, which uh, I, I don't know, is OP the, the asshole here? Because, because these friends excluded her from the conversation where they were talking about going to where they made the, the last minute decision, last minute being two weeks out to go to this, to the, the supernatural convention anyway, and didn't talk to her about it. Maybe they just assumed that, uh, that she'd be broke because they knew that she was acquiring stuff for her graduation party, but they knew probably if they were close enough friends, they knew when that graduation party was going to be. They just chose this instead of her and chose to exclude her. It does, as chat is saying here right now, it does very much feel like they were just looking for an opportunity to, to essentially remove OP from their friend group. They made the decision to do something like this without her, a show that that the three of them watched together, didn't communicate to her about it. And because of that ended up not going to her graduation party. I don't know that they maliciously sent pictures throughout the event. I feel like that was them probably feeling guilty and trying to include her in some way. I feel like it backfired because it came across as a slap in the face. Uh, But, but it seems like they very much didn't want her there and them saying they were still going to try to come to the, to her graduation party was probably fueled by guilt and nothing more. Uh, I, I think that's why the pictures probably happened as well. I don't think they meant it to be malicious because if they did, then they wouldn't be saying, yeah, we're still going to try to come to your party. Now, at the end of the night, I'm sure they were wiped from that convention um, and made the decision not to go. That decision was made, what, two hours after the convention ended? No, four hours after the convention ended. But, uh, okay, con lovers. At the end of a convention, is there like an after party? Do a lot of people who who go to the cons like go hang out somewhere or does it like hard end at seven and everybody goes home? How does that work? Always call on after parties. That's what I'm thinking. So I, I mean, that may be, that may be when the center closes, but I don't think that's when that's when everything is done. Sometimes there are after parties depends on the cons. Some do, some don't, but Tony spark has some thoughts. I feel like you might have some experience in a, in a similar, similar veined kind of thing here. Let's bring him up. Let him talk about it. Ladies and gentlemen, Tony spark. Hi everybody. And first off, the the whole after party thing, like I get it that that's that may be part of the experience, but you should know if you are going to this convention on that day that you have an after party and it's your friend's party. Like that's where you're supposed to be. And I feel like you said they made the decision when they got the tickets that they weren't her friends, and I I think that's true. Um I think the fact I think it'd be a different story if OP had never been a part of the discussions about going to this initially. And the fact that she was, they decided as a group not to go, even if it came out last minute, there should have been some kind of, she should have been in that conversation of saying, Hey, I know your party's that day. I know you probably can't go to it. We're going to go to it, but we'll be at your party. And the bottom line is if they're, if they're really your friends, they would show up for you because that's what friends do. Friends show up to things that are important for you and you shouldn't have to beg them to do that. And the fact that they did this, it's, I mean, it's really, I understand if you want to go, if you want to go to the convention, go, it sounds like you had plenty of time to go to the convention, get done in plenty of time, make your way to the party. Yeah. You're going to be tired, but you know what? Hey, that's your friend. And you're going to be there supporting your friend, whether you're tired or not. I mean, I think that's, I I think it's pretty shitty. And and I understand that being like, you, you mentioned sending the photos as a way to include them. But I would think the same thing. Like, I would not take it as a way of feeling included. I'd be like, 
well, I didn't even get invited to go to this thing. They're sending me pictures to it. Wow. It looks like they're having a great time. They keep telling me all day that they're going to the party. Like, and then they don't show up. Like, that's pretty shitty because you're leading her on all day long and you're at this party. And yeah, if these are really some of your closest friends and they don't show up, I mean, that you're going to feel like shit. Like it's, it's, you know, if they're your friends, they'll, they'll show up for you. And I think that they made the statement that they, and the fact, and also, okay, that's not even the other part about the drunk text. I mean, how bad was this text that they uh, cut contact with you? I mean, which one of us, like who out there hasn't gotten mad at their friends, been drunk or been whatever and got mad and sent off a message that they may like, they're like, man, they wake up the next day and shouldn't have said that and apologize for it. And if your friends just say, oh, whatever, I'm done. Like how good of friends were you to begin with? If they can't even, you can't even get past that and then have a conversation about why she was that upset and sent that message to begin with, because it's like, oh, I mean, if they're your friends, like everybody fights with their friends, everybody has disagreements with them. And you can't just say like, oh, I'm done with you because you were mean to me last night. Like, come on. Yeah, it's, it's ridiculous. And this is something very important to OP and you didn't show up. So. Real friends bicker. Right? Yeah, that's right. Happens. This is from the AITAH subreddit and is titled, Will I Be the Askonaut If I Cancelled Our Wedding Cake? So to start, I run a doggy daycare. One of our pups belongs to another local business owner and I had thought we had a positive relationship. Her dog was fantastic at our facility. She always paid on time, was always communicative, and was very pleasant with all of my staff. We accept payment through cash, debit, credit, and e-transfer to our business account in correlation to invoices. The owner pays an e-transfer, has her invoices up to date, and she always pays early if not on time. Of course, some owners aren't nearly as reliable. Lately, we put it out there that we are no longer accepting e-transfers for our daycare services. She took this as directed to her, settled up her invoice, and said she didn't want to take her dog here anymore. In said post to our page, I never mentioned names, never tagged anyone, etc. Simply mentioned that as of next week, we aren't taking any e-transfers anymore. Turns out she is making our wedding cake, something I found out by accident. We bought a little package deal that includes virtually everything, save for the dress and suits, in the amounts of anger directed at us in the Facebook message, it is very difficult for me to trust that she won't be petty in other circles. Out of curiosity, I looked her business up and there are a significant amount of bad reviews due to the owner being quite defensive and abrasive with customers who had genuine concerns. Well, shit. The solution path I had in mind is out the window then. The vendor we bought the package from has other bakers for cakes. The owner doesn't know that I know it's her. The owner was not the one who sold us the package. That person is very nice and one of the kindest individuals we've ever had the opportunity to meet. Will I be the astronaut if I canceled the wedding cake from this specific vendor? I don't want any other drama or implications to come of this. Ah, what I was going to say in the beginning was this seems like something that communication could handle right this seems like something where you need to have a conversation with this person even 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 notwithstanding the whole cake thing i'm viewing as a separate thing here if you have a very good customer that misunderstands something feels like it was directed at them and abruptly cancels services with you talk to them and be like hey uh you've been a great customer we've had a great relationship over the years it feels like you might be uh, offended right now or feels like we might have done something to offend you and we want to make sure that we that we have a conversation and, and remove any kind of misunderstanding here that's issue one here and i feel like as a as a, a business owner i feel like that's something that you just have to suck it up and do sometimes it sucks but it is something that you just have to suck it up and do sometimes so i, I feel like you did misstep here by just letting it happen and being like oh well i guess they're gone now talk about it uh and try to reestablish that connection. Now the separate issue, the separate issue of, of this, this customer of yours turns out they, they run a cake shop and have a lot of bad reviews. That's a problem just in and of itself, because now you have a lot of risk involved with your wedding cake, which is not the kind of thing that you want risk involved with at all, right? There's already enough risk with all the other 87 plates that are spinning and moving parts of a wedding day, if you know there's significant risk involved with a wedding cake, yeah, I think you're not an astronaut at all for changing that for a very separate reason, though. I don't think it has anything to do with what's going on with your business. I do think having a conversation with this 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 
person slash former customer slash hopefully a future customer again because they were a solid low maintenance customer for you is a damn good idea. Um, but I do not think accepting risk, a high level of risk when it comes to your wedding cake is a smart idea. Lynette says you canceling your order also shows them that you know who they are. I, I, I understand. I understand. Um, however, I think this is that part of it is a conversation I would have with the person who facilitated the package. And then the question becomes, Hey, look, um, we, we noticed that one of your vendors here has a lot of bad reviews on the cake side thing. We've got some concerns. Do they know that an order has been placed already? Have you alerted them at this point? Or is that something that you do later on? If it's not something they do till later on, I think you've got, you, you've got an advantage there, right? You've got an advantage to be able to make that pivot without, without them finding out that, that it was you. But, but I do feel like they're two separate issues because it's not the, it's not the awkward dealing that you had with, with your business that, that gives me the heebie jeebies about this one. It's all the negative reviews and this is a wedding cake. It's too risky. It's too risky. I would talk to the customer to try to reestablish them as a, a customer of your business, but I would also have a conversation with whoever facilitated the packages and, and issue your concerns to them and be like, Hey, like, does this person already know that this order is in regardless of if they know that it's us or not, do they already know that there's an order? How painless is it to switch that around? Have you heard other people express concerns about this vendor here? If you know that there's risks involved with this vendor, why is this vendor part of this package? That kind of conversation, I feel like is a two separate thing here. Ooh, nepotism, maybe house of violations. That's possible. So if it's the wedding planner person or whoever that package was, was done through, I you may have to do a little bit of homework before opening up that can of worms too. no matter what NDA it's your, it's your wedding. You're allowed to make whatever changes you want and, and avoiding risk when it comes to your wedding is probably generally a good idea. Uh, Dr. Sweets, I think not having a conversation with her and canceling only reinforces thoughts that it's personal a hundred percent. I think if you don't have a conversation with this person as a customer of your business and then you cancel the order, it definitely, if they know that it's you, it just solidifies the fact that there's a problem when there maybe isn't a problem at all, at least when it comes to your business. If they're not going to get your order either way, that's that's a separate issue. I think having the conversation, at least I don't think there's really a problem there. I think there's a misunderstanding. Misunderstandings just require communication. But who knows? Who knows? Am I the ass cannot for calling off the wedding after my fiance joked he was trapped in this marriage? My fiance proposed three months ago. It was a beautiful, intimate proposal, and I loved the idea of telling our future kids about his proposal. I was really excited to plan my wedding. I work in the events industry and this sort of thing is my passion. My fiance has ADHD and finds planning very boring. His default response is whatever you want. So I've had full creative freedom, but I am a little sad he didn't contribute to anything, even the color scheme. My fiance and our friends were talking about the wedding. I was telling them some of my plans to cut costs down and my friend made a joke that it was a good thing my fiance locked me down because I'm a professional. My fiance joked that he didn't lock me down. I locked him up. He said he was trying to enjoy his last days of freedom before I trapped him in the marriage. That's generally not a good thing to say to your fiance. I felt really upset that he didn't acknowledge my hard work in planning the wedding and because he joked that I was trapping him into a marriage and that I pushed him into getting married. I decided we should call off the wedding for now. He wasn't interested in getting married and I don't want to marry someone who doesn't enthusiastically want to get married. I talked to my fiance and said that I'm going to call off the wedding plans and we could reevaluate if he really wants to get married or even stay in this relationship. We haven't sent out our RSVPs or booked too many vendors yet, so I want to call it off before it becomes an even more expensive mistake. He was very upset that I called off the wedding and said he was just joking. He said it's normal to joke about this. Am I the ass cannot? Edit. I've talked with him about his lack of enthusiasm about anything. I don't even need him to have initiative, but an opinion would be nice. He said he doesn't care about the details at all. I let it go after I felt like I was nagging him to have an opinion on something. The joke made me realize that he probably doesn't want to get married. That's where his lack of enthusiasm comes from. We are pretty early into wedding planning, and I want to call it off because weddings are expensive, and I'm not sinking more of my money into uncertainty. 
Figuring out whether he wants to get married will take time, and time is money. I can work with him on figuring that out, but I can't keep a wedding timeline with that. Okay. Okay. I think there are two sides to this, right? There is the one side that is a... Uh, we could go this route and we could say, okay, you bros owed up here, bro. You don't joke about that kind of shit when clearly your fiance takes this kind of thing very, very, very seriously. You screwed up. And her response in that case would be an NTA. There's another path, though. There is another path here. And I think it is this. I'm not looking at specifically just what is happening with the wedding. I'm looking at the long term success of this relationship. And here's the problem that I see with OP's actions here. What I see with oh, what I see happening with OP's actions is that when she perceived there to be a problem, rather than communicating through it, she took action and canceled this thing. Right. This is something that you discover very early on in marriage or in a relationship. This is one of the hard things that I think you push through. I think you communicate before taking action. She took action, said she wanted to call off the wedding and then communicated what she had done, which he got upset about. I think the smarter play here would have been to say, hey, Let's talk about what you said earlier and really dive into that because I understand you think you were joking, but I feel like there might be some truth in jest with that or it, there's it really bothered me. So we need to we need to work through that conversation here and that coupled with your lack of interest in anything waiting related has me thinking you really don't want to get married. So let's talk about this and figure out figure out where we're really at before we take another step forward. Instead, she took action without having that conversation first. And I feel like to have a long term successful relationship, you've got to start having conversations first before taking drastic action. So for the long term success of the relationship, I don't feel like this was the right move. This might have been the right move, given the circumstances here where he just bros owed up and maybe he really doesn't give a shit. And maybe he does feel like he's being forced into it. I feel like she could have found that out for real if she had waited to take action and had the conversation first. And that's general health of relationship, not necessarily wedding related. If you, yeah, if people had good communication, we wouldn't have 80% of our stories. You're right. All right. So, so just forget what I said about trying to, trying to heal the communication part of this. Keep screwing it up because we, we need stories. Stories are ammo for content for us. And she's, she's NTA here for doing what she's doing. I, I do think there was another play that could have been really good for them growing as a couple. Uh, Jenny, yeah, good point here. Jenny H says, yeah, yeah, no, they aren't ready. 100%. No matter what, they aren't ready. They aren't ready for this. Um, now, most people aren't ready whenever they get married. And year one of being married is really hard because it's really hard to be ready to spend your life with someone when you haven't done that yet. Right. So, I mean, Candy Thunder and I, year one is really hard because we're learning to communicate. We're learning communication styles. We're learning how to work through big problems and serious conversations. You don't learn those things with a person until you go through them. This could have been an opportunity. We did determine NTA on this for her calling off the wedding. Um, again, though, I think if you look at this as a long, if you look in, in the long term success of the relationship, this probably could have been handled differently. But in this specific, really just micro focused on the wedding part of this. Yeah. I mean, you're NTA. NTA. <laughs> All right, here we go. Next story we're diving into is from the AITA subreddit, and this one is titled, Am I the astronaut for threatening to quit my job because my wife just randomly quit hers? My 35 male wife, 33 female, inherited a large chunk of her late father's sizable estate. She made it very clear that the money she inherited was supposed to go to her dad's bloodline, also known as her and our children, 13 female, 9 male, that I am not entitled to a cent of it. We live in North Dakota, and I make 52 k a year doing a property management job that I hate. It gets old driving around, dealing with tenants who take their frustration out on me because my boss decided to cut corners. My wife worked as an accounts payable clerk making 32 k She hated her job because there was no growth and it was boring, but she held the job to show her dad she was responsible. Her dad passed, and she now inherited a five-bedroom mortgage-free house in another state. It's in one of the most HCOL, high-cost of living, areas near a private college where nearly all the students come from East Coast private schools. She rented out the house by bedroom to students and gets 6 k a month when it's all said and done. 
The rest of her inheritance is locked in a trust that pays out 15 k a month. Living in North Dakota, the approximately $252,000 she gets is more than enough to live well. However, I feel my wife has been unfair with how she's handled the money. Right away, she rented herself a BMW. Wow, going, going hard for it. And then she decided she was done cooking and would order out every day. The problem is I have high cholesterol and a lot of the foods aren't good for me. And the foods that are good for me, she never leaves enough real leftovers. I can stomach the fact that her inheritance is hers, but it does hurt that I've never resisted picking up the financial burden when I earned more, but she hoards all of her new money. She put her inheritance, disbursements, and rent income all into accounts under her name. And meanwhile, our day job incomes kept going into joint bank accounts. That would make sense, but then she quit her job out of the blue last week. She said she looked at her boss, 50 female, and that she was not cut out to work until she was old like her. She wants to purse her passion for photography, but doesn't want to earn money from it. So she quit. But the problem is that she quit because she gets 250K, basically effort free. I don't benefit from that, but still have to pay for the mortgage and other household expenses since she refuses to pay for them, citing it is joint expenses. We got into a fight and I threatened to quit my job too if we were all quitting jobs now because work is hard. Her rationalization was that she buys takeout every day for us now, so my job was enough to pay for our mortgage. I asked that if she wants to upgrade houses like she upgrades cars, I'm guessing the new house won't be in my name. Will I have to pay the maintenance and contribute to mortgage payments? She said I should have to because it will be living expenses that I would benefit from just as much as her. Am I the astronaut for being annoyed at her selfishness? Well, that is a different question, right? Okay, so there's there's two questions here. Am I the astronaut for threatening to quit my job because my wife just randomly quit hers? And then am I the astronaut for being annoyed at her selfishness? Uh, I think we can operate based on the assumption that this is one of the states where inheritance your your spouse or partner has no claim to at all. Um, but but I think you learned something here, OP. I think you learned that when she has the means to not need you, she doesn't need you. And since she doesn't need you, she doesn't really care. And that's a tough thing to find out. Candy Thunder, if you inherited a bajillion dollars tomorrow, would you start treating me like shit and eventually leave me? I'd hope not. I think what you learned here, OP, is that is that is that the, your relationship with your wife was largely largely based on dependence, and now that she's not dependent on you anymore, really doesn't give a shit, and that sucks. That's tough. That's a tough thing to find out. That's a really tough thing to learn. It's terrible. Yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, saying that if she does upgrade, if she does choose a bigger house now because she's got this income coming in, OP is like, am I going to have to contribute to that as, as well, even though my name's not going to be on it based on how everything's going so far? And she said, yes. So uh, yeah, she's essentially choosing money over you on the daily now. And that uh, money makes people behave in very, very strange ways. I think you're finding out how selfish your wife is right now, right? You're truly discovering how selfish she is right now. And that has changed her into a different person I think you're going to have to communicate through this. Um, yeah, the whole 50 is old. Uh, what? What? AITA for being annoyed at her selfishness. No. Am I the asking not for threatening to quit my job because my wife randomly quit hers? She didn't randomly quit hers. There was there was a reason behind it. You unfortunately don't have the ability to quit yours because um because while she was dependent on you for a long time, uh, you cannot be dependent on her because she will not allow it. So you can't. You get threatened to. The only person that's going to hurt is you because she, she's she got enough money to, to cover it now and really it seems like could care less if you're there or not. So yeah, it is an empty threat. It, it definitely is an empty, an empty threat. The threatening to quit your job, uh, like it's not going to accomplish anything. I don't think she's going to give a shit. I'm going NTA here period across the board because the situation that you're in right now I, I i imagine would be super frustrating but you're finding out that that the person you've been married to for a long time really only was with you because she was dependent on you you have two kids though right 13 and 9 ah that's super unfortunate uh, uh yeah it, it feels like these people should not be married right now but you've you've got two kids involved here as well and Judging by what we know so far, yes, she's going to have them set up and she's going to take care of them just fine. But when they're with you, there's going to be a stark contrast. So uh, I, I don't expect her to make that easy. 
Um, it will it, it will become complicated here. House of Violet, yeah, uh, two happy homes are better than one miserable one for sure. We've we've seen that over and over again. I don't. I have a feeling one of these homes are not going to be happy because I think OP's partner here is going to end up finding out that money can't buy happiness. She's trying to buy happiness right now. I think it's it's going to lead to it's going to lead to an empty cup, and let's see what happens. Strap in. This is a wild ride. It is from the anti-work subreddit. First time I'm seeing that. My boss opened a credit card in my name and did the same thing to two coworkers. Oh, shh. <laughs> right off the rip. That is no bueno. As if being underpaid at my job isn't enough. I just found out that my boss opened up a credit card in my name. I work at a mom and pop type business in graphic design and my boss is the same guy who hired me. Two days ago, I got a call from Capital One asking about unusual charges on my credit card. The rep went over a couple of charges, and I had literally no idea what she was talking about. I told them it looked like those charges weren't on my app, and the rep said she tried calling at a different phone number, but it was disconnected. She confirmed I had two credit cards through them, but I only have one. The rep told me my other account, my actual account, had no strange charges, but a different one opened only in December was nearing its credit limit, and there were two large charges at different Walmart stores. I asked for the address on the accounts, and one was mine. The other, which I had no idea about, was the home address for my boss. They canceled the card and said I might get contacted by their fraud department. Yesterday, I told my team about it, and two of them immediately chimed up that they had their identity stolen last month with credit cards opened up in their name. The boss, who works remotely, told about a dozen of us at the end of November that we needed to fill out updated W-9s because the company was moving to a new system and send them to him. One of them ran home on lunch and grabbed the letter they were sent from the credit card company. The phone number is one number off of our boss's cell phone number, and the address is to a UPS store in the town where he lives. I've put up with a lot working here, but this is absolutely the last straw. The work environment is middling at best, but the pay is horrible. I'm calling in sick today and starting to look for something else that actually works for me and pays at least what I'm worth. What else should I be doing other than calling the cops? Huh? <clears throat> this is, yeah, that's a felony. That's, 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 a, I mean, call the cops first thing and talk through with them and figure out what you need to be doing here. Talk to a lawyer. Like there, there needs to be, holy crap. Um, edit. Thanks so much for the advice. I'm going to post an update as soon as I have one. And we do have the update here as well, but that is, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, this, this is like a group lawsuit. Like I, how many people do you have to have to have a class action? I don't know. Uh, but this is nuts. How do, how do you even, how does it even happen? And also how desperate do you have to be to start opening up credit cards in other people's names? Like when, uh, how, how is that an option? How is that? How is that the route that you think is going to save you? That's just, that's just deciding to take a whole bunch of other people down with you. I don't know, that's terrible. Okay, update one. My company put the manager on unpaid leave a couple of days after they were contacted by a detective about the open cards. Four of us ended up filing police reports on the same day. A couple days later, I got an alert from the credit monitoring company saying someone tried opening a Discover card in my name. They put a stop to that. Still freaking doing it after people found out? One of my coworkers got a call back from the detective on Tuesday and told him a judge signed off on a warrant for identity theft. I forget the exact term for the criminal complaint last week. Apparently, the detective was able to get video footage from a store of our boss using a credit card registered in the coworker's name. Our boss also drove a car registered to him and from the store, all visible on surveillance. The detective said the sheriff's department or state's attorney department made sure to include the boss's state in the extradition limits for the warrant. My coworker said the reason the detective called was because the detective was called by another detective in the city where our boss lives. Cops in that city have tried pulling him over three times in the last month, with the last time being on Monday. All three times, he just doesn't stop. What? Is that an option? Wait, they tried pulling him over, but all three times, he just didn't stop? I, I didn't know that was an option. I Wait, wait what? Ah. The place has a zero pursuit policy, so they have to let him go, and they think he might be armed. What the f 
Okay, hold on a second. I, I like how is it how is it that Washington State has a no pursuit law? I understand. I I understand. You know, pursuits can put additional people in in danger, and they're doing this to limit collateral damage. But the problem with the no pursuit policy is that criminals then know that you have a no pursuit policy, and all they have to do is run. This doesn't seem like a foolproof plan here. Doesn't seem like a good idea. Or or if you are going to do that, you have to have some alternative that prevents the chase from happening or being needed in the first place, right? You can't just say, oh, if you run, we're not going to chase you. That's that's pretty much it. That's just the extent of it. The house where he is supposed to be living is emptied out as well. The detective from my city told my coworker he's still waiting on other surveillance footage in regards to the rest of the complaints, including mine, and they'll likely be added on as additional counts, but they want to get him into custody first. From what it sounds like, he'd have to go through the system on his felony, a looting charge first. Then it could be extradited here to see a judge about the identity theft. Wow. Uh, edit. I followed the advice from this post. Comments. Uh, OP references here. You need to tell all of your coworkers to check their credit immediately. You're also going to want to call the police like today. If he did, if he did it to you and a couple of others, my guess is he's probably doing it to every single person who sent him that W9. I'd take a couple of immediate steps if I were you. Get a police report. Because if the credit card companies think you might be lying, they'll do what they can to screw you over. Start a credit monitoring service like this one and check your credit. If he's opening one credit card in your name, he might have opened several. Freeze your credit so that he can't do any more damage. You said you work for a small company. I don't know if you have an HR department, but that would be my next stop. If you don't, time to hit up the owners, but don't tell them you're about to leave. Okay, we have another update to go through here. Box him in. Yeah. Tax strips, something, something. So, this is my... the update where it gets wild. Oh, oh, it's not wild yet. Wow. Here we go. Update two. Final update. I had mostly forgotten about this post until a few days ago. Wouldn't say it was a happy ending. The silver lining is that it only took about three weeks and the card that wasn't mine was out of my name. My credit score went up like 90 points. I also started a new job with a decent pay bump and far more time off. A couple of months ago, my old boss, who was fired, ended up getting unalived in a car accident. Wait, what the f*** is happening? About a day later, it came out that he had most likely unalived an elderly woman and stole her car. Her daughter went to her house, and when she didn't answer the phone and found her mother uh, unalived and her car and purse missing, his car was parked on the street a block away. Apparently, he fled police stops another three or four times before crashing into a metal electric pole with no seatbelt. He was fleeing from the police again in the stolen car. They found illegal substances and a pew-pew inside. Okay, well, I guess the no-chase policy doesn't really keep any people safe now, doesn't it? Because this kind of shit happens. I got a call from a lawyer because I was one of the ones who reported the credit card fraud. We talked for maybe 10 minutes about what happened to me, and he filled me in a bit about what happened since. There are now two lawsuits going through the works, supposedly. One is from the family of the woman he probably unalived. They're, they are saying the police failed to apprehend him before she got unalived. That lists all the police departments and cities involved. Wow. The other is from his family going after the sheriff's department and county, which chased him and led to the crash. I doubt I have to testify as the lawyer was mainly concerned about the specific events leading to me knowing it was my old boss who stole my identity. It sounds to me like everyone is going for settlement money. Just figured I'd let everybody know what happened. Too long, don't read. He won't be stealing anyone else's identity anymore. Holy shit. God, can you imagine being wrapped up in this mess in any way, shape, or form? Can you imagine just having your life turned upside down by somebody who just like flagrantly is just like, I'm taking everybody down with me and gives zero shits about who they harm and how in the process. This had to be some kind of, of, of uh, addiction fueling or I don't, I don't know. Like there's desperation and then there's just madness and desperation will cause you to do some crazy things, but, but addiction will cause you to do this kind of shit. Now, now all the people in this case, now suing police departments because of the shit that happened and they failed to apprehend him. I guess that's one of the downsides of, of that, that no pursuit policy. I don't know. They definitely do pursuits here. So, uh, man, I just can't imagine being, being in this mess at all. (laughs) 
All right, our next story comes from the AITA subreddit, and this one is titled, Am I the Astronaut for Letting My Girlfriend Be Homeless? Seems like uncomfortable. I started dating my longtime friend about seven months ago, and while I've always had a crush on her and loved her personality, she has a recurring problem. She has a hard time finding or keeping a residence for long periods. She has no family that is responsible enough to turn to, and her friends are all either moved out of state or married with children, so she doesn't have many places to turn to. Not long after we started dating, about a week, she confessed to me that she was behind on her bills. Rent, car payments, to the point that she couldn't provide for herself. Being a longtime friend and now boyfriend, I helped her out by giving her $700 so she could write her sales. That helped until she fell ill and missed a week of work so she would be behind on payments again. She suffers from a compromised immune system, so I wasn't, a go- I wasn't going to hold that against her. I gave her another $1,000 to cover expenses so she could have more than enough to make up the upcoming payments and still eat. Then her uncle ruins the relationship between her and her landlord, meaning she only has a month to find a new place to live. She refuses to live with a roommate, and after a month, I convinced my parents to let her live with us and my room rent-free. Not long after she moves in, she quits her job. They were abusive to the point of law-breaking, and she looks for a new one taking about a month or so to do that. I pay all of her costs at this time for another $600-ish. Then she lands a job at a chain coffee shop and needs a new wardrobe for the dress code. I front the bill for that and the makeup for about $1,000, including makeup and new clothes. She starts the job and is immediately harassed by staff for her short height, some not even helping her get things from high shelves. She then falls ill, ill with COVID and misses more than a week of work. The coffee shop demands she take a leave of absence for some reason, but we decide she should look into getting her older job back. I pay her expenses now for another $700-ish, and she goes back to her old job. Now, after four months and able to make money, my folks want her to leave, having overstayed her welcome. But she doesn't want a roommate and wants to get a house with me, a goal I've been saving up for for nearly a year at that point. Now she's living with a coworker until the end of the month and will be homeless after unless I find and close on a house. She's upset that it isn't happening fast enough for her, but I feel like I've done a lot for her already and she needs to square her rigging and find a place to rent with a roommate until I have saved up enough to buy a house. Am I the astronaut? Also, this guy definitely sails like all of his analogies are, are sailing related here. Rider rigging and uh, and square sail or yeah, square sails and rider rigging. Yeah, yeah, dude, dude definitely sails. Uh, or was brought up in that. So the the question is, am I the asking out for letting my girlfriend be homeless? He is in this. Let me try to do the math real quick. Okay. He's already in this for there's 1700, 23, 3300, 4k. He's 4k into this already. Just like buying wardrobes and, and paying her bills uh, to this point. And that's, I don't know how long that's been, what, four months or so, but he's, he's 4k into this already. Uh, and, and without having further explanation about, you know, the only source he has to understand like what was wrong with the previous workplace, he said they were abusive to the point of it being unlawful, but now she's wanting to go get that job back. And also I can't imagine that, that people would be so mean about someone's height that it would force them to leave the job. Like he didn't mean. Maybe that's a hazing them getting to know or just giving her a hard time kind of thing. I don't know. It's not cool, but but I don't feel like you're getting the full story here, OP. And 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 I feel like it's scenario after scenario after scenario where you just magically have to pay for things. And now you're trying to close on a house so you guys can live together, but she doesn't feel like it's happening fast enough for her. There's an escalation happening here, and it, and it's dangerous. And I'm not saying that what she isn't what she's going through isn't real, and that it's that's a very very difficult thing. But you have to accept that you are facilitating and probably enabling to a point um, this this cycle of this cycle of, of problems and now well, what she would what would she have done if you weren't around there to pick up the tab for this 4k worth of problems at some point you got to teach somebody to fish rather than just feed them right at some point there has to be there has to be some independence that is learned here and i think you have to look at yourself and say am i just enabling a problem right now or am i truly helping somebody stand up it's it's a, a hand up not a handout right and i think if you can figure out a way to to make turn your caring for this person into a hand up rather than a handout that would be worthy right now you're just you're you're handing out and i don't know if that's going to end well, it doesn't feel like it. 
Oh, yeah, rent free at his parents' house for months. So we don't have a mathematical value to throw on that. But he's 4K into this and also that. Miss Helene, what coffee shop makes you wear $1,000 worth of uniforms? Well, makeup is included in there, too. But that's a lot. That's a lot of money. How many? Like, how many? Would you need 20, 20 identical uniforms and makeup? Even then, like you're, that's a lot. That's a lot, Elise, yeah. Wore out her welcome, says a lot. They were probably watching watching their child, you know, uh, shell out 4K worth of money for this person and been like, yeah, she's worn out her welcome. She can't stay here anymore. Uh, ugh. I, I, it feels like she's lying, Stephanie, or at least not not revealing the whole truth. It's just, it can't just be that like this this crazy cataclysmic shit keeps happening to her that over and over and over again that cycle has to be stopped somewhere and there has to be a certain el- um, element of choice choice involved with that too a house of violations five foot two and i can reach anything on the top shelf on my own independent yeah constant victim there you go overkill <laughs> that may be that may be the way to look at it if this person is a constant victim of the world and of life and if that's the cycle that they found themselves stuck in they i'm sure that she truly believes that i'm sure she truly believes that that she's a victim of every single one of these situations. That's why that hand up instead of the hand out is so important because otherwise it's just, it's a, it's a legit cycle. It's a cycle. I hope that the makeup that he bought was like the, like the Johnny Rose makeup that he got for Stevie. It's like the big kit. That's like way overkill. And she probably doesn't really want, but he thought he was doing a good thing. Am I the astronaut for refusing to participate in a birthday gift since I'm making the cake? I, 33 male, do not live in the U.S. I live alone in France on a very low income. Relevant. It's currently 3 a.m. and I had a situation while eating dinner at my sister's place that is keeping me awake. I need to know if I'm the astronaut here and if I need to apologize. So yesterday I went to eat dinner at my sister's place. It was planned. She knew I was coming. When I arrived, as always, my nephew, 14 male, and my niece five female and two female all came running to me. And after that, I said hello to my sister and my brother-in-law and also my brother-in-law's mother about my brother-in-law's mother. She mostly lives on a cruise ship. This is how she is living her retirement. So it's given that she isn't around very often, but when she is here, we have, or we had a good relationship. So when I arrived yesterday evening, she was sitting on the couch. And when I saw her, I was surprised since I didn't know she was back from her trip. So I went to say hello to her. La bise as a, French do. And I said, Oh, hi. Nice to see you. She just replied with a very cold. Hello. I tried to encourage the conversation with questions about how she was doing. How was her last cruise and where she went? But all I got was a very short answer. One or two words. Very cold at dinner. It's the same vibe. My brother-in-law's mother does not participate. She doesn't talk much and just looks at her plate. At the end of the dinner, everyone cleans the table and puts everything away. I took a tray out of my sister's cabinet and put it aside so I could take it home. Seeing this, the grandmother asks what I'm doing. I explained to her that this was the main reason why my sister invited me to eat tonight. I need this tray since I'm the one cooking the cake for my niece's two female birthday this Saturday. With that, she just replied with, I'm sorry, what? Very pointed, and you could hear the anger in her voice. So my sister explained that she asked me to make the traditional birthday cake for our family. Our grandmother used to make this cake while we were growing up for all the birthdays. And now I'm the only one making this cake. And I agreed to make it for Saturday. It won't be a small cake. Around 50 guests should be there. My brother-in-law's mother just shrugged, rolled her eyes and said, Anyway, you still need to give me the hundred pounds for your part of the gift. Forget the cake. I already called and reserved a cake for Saturday from a bakery to to that I reply, um, I'm, I'm sorry, what are you talking about? I didn't know anything about that, and I can't with my finances. I've already bought everything to make the cake, and even without that, uh, 100 pounds is a huge part of my monthly budget. I can't afford it. This is why I'm making the cake. That's my way of participating in the party. Then she started screaming, you're a shame and a disgrace. I just don't understand why the kids love you so much. You're poor. That's your problem. Deal with it. I don't want your trashy homemade cake on the pics of my granddaughter's birthday and I want my money. She left slamming the door on her way out. 
Now my brain won't stop. I keep reliving the evening, and I'm wondering if I'm the astronaut because we talked about money. She was expecting for everyone to participate in the gift. I don't know what the gift is. And since she ordered her own cake in a bakery, what if I put her in a difficult position regarding her budget? Ah, uh, that's the end of the story. The question is, am I the astronaut for refusing to participate in a birthday gift since I'm making the cake? Hell no. Uh, she, uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and just tip toe out onto a limb here. OP and say that, that you saying you're going to make the cake and not contribute to this group gift is not going to put her in a dire situation because she's living on cruise ships, right? Like she's, she's probably okay. Um, you, on the other hand, it's, it is a make or break situation, make or bake situation. Oh, come on. That was pretty good. Not as good as shellfish, but it was pretty good. Um, yeah. OP and the sister already discussed this. They already discussed with the parents that he was going to be making this cake. They already discussed everything ahead of time. Now she shows up and starts spouting this nonsense. I would be having a conversation with my sister and being like, hey, what is she talking about? What is going on? I don't understand anything that is happening here and just gets just gets jumped with all this information. Candy Thunder has some opinions here. She's going to jump in using her microphone. We'll see it. Uh, Not my opinion, but I did. I had to read further into this one, and I did find a comment from someone that said, she is attacking you to take out her hatefulness because if she attacks your sister and her son, they will cut her off. Ah, but but for what reason? Just She just pissed about something, random anything? I think it's ignore this lady, make the cake. cake. You're a good aunt, and and you can ignore. Um, I think that she's upset because she wants to plan the party the way that she wants it planned, Uh, and the, the mom, the sister, doesn't agree with her, and I think that's like nail on the head with she can't take it out on on the mom because she was so like she just found someone else child. okay yeah. gotcha just, yeah okay so she just, she just found someone else to to take out her ire on because she couldn't take it out on who she wanted to take it out on that's plausible i still think a conversation with your sister is warranted at this point op to be like hey what in the hell is happening here because because crazy cruise lady who normally gets along with me fine was just like pissed at me from the beginning i don't know what i did uh, so, so fill me in also this group group gift thing. First I'm hearing of this and now she wants a hundred pounds from me. Just like boof. I don't know. What do you, what do you, I, I don't know what to do here. Please tell me what is happening. Surely you have some more insight into this. So jealous because the kids control or because the kids adore OP. That's entirely possible too. Whatever the reason it's OP did respond and said that she's jealous, plain and simple because he has such an amazing relationship with the grandkids and she chose not to be there. Uh, and so she's taking it out on, oh, okay. on the fact that she doesn't have the relationship. She thinks that she should have. So because the kids like him more than they like her, there must be something yeah. wrong with him. And she's, <laughs> she's yeah. just taking it, it out said on him. Whenever he got there, they were on the couch with grandma, but as soon as he entered, they got up and literally ran to him. Mm. <laughs> So this is another one of those cases where you've got a grandma here who is there not for the benefit of the children. She's there to fill up her own cup, spending time with the kids. Right. And he's there for them baking a cake for them. Like he doesn't, he doesn't, I don't know. It's that sucks. It sucks to be, to be him in that situation, but understand it. It's not, it's not about anything that he did. It's, it's a her problem that she's trying to make a him problem.